A little bit about Quebec and Canada, because again, in 1956, you come from Montreal. Yes. A very cosmopolitan, urbane city to a small town in Ontario called Stratford. Um, that must have been culturally a... A shock. A shock. Yeah. As I told you, my first reaction was crying. <laughs> and what do the, the French... I've always... Well, maybe it's me just being English, but I've always... Um, felt that the, the French sensibilities about culture, about what culture plays in your life, in your culture, in your society, were always more advanced or sophisticated than the English part of Canada, which was always a little slow. Maybe it's due to the fact that we had to fight for our culture. Because as I was explaining, we, we cut our, our, our liaison with France, and on the other hand, uh, Quebec was, and it's true, a priest-ridden province. And uh, culture was not a very good thing up to a certain point. Because it develops too much of your uh, freedom of thinking. Uh, you have to live within certain rules. That was the way uh, the, the, the uh, priests were teaching their own pupils at, at that time. So we had to fight against that. And uh, politically speaking, it, it's the same thing. Education was not very popular in the Duplessis time. Uh, th there was a, a, famous, a famous declaration by a minister called Antoine Rivard. He said something like, education can be damageable because it develops the mind too much. It learns you how to act by yourself, be yourself, etc., etc., uh, to the opposition of going uh, along the rules that are taught to you and uh, the, the way you, you should be and not the way you were yourself. So we had to fight, I think, for our culture and maybe that's why uh, we came, came, came out with that uh, strength, in fact. How does an artist fight for their culture? By being yourself. There's no way out of it. And of course, by, by being active in some, some movements even political movements, not being partisans, not, not necessarily trying to be elected as a representative, but not, not being ashamed of expressing what you are thinking and what you are feeling. You know, I, I just learned in the biography of Marcel Proust that uh, there, there was a German philosopher, his name is completely unknown, but it was something like uh, Fest, I think, that said, it's, it's usually said that Hitler took power because of the economical situation in, in uh, Germany, and he said that's not true. He took power because the educated people failed to take their own responsibility. And I think that if, you're, if you have the, uh, the chance of being educated, you don't have to be afraid and ashamed of expressing yourself and saying what, what you know and what, what you feel and what you think. So do you mean uh, not being afraid of expressing yourself to politicians or the media or your family or... Everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. But I think you have to take advantage of your special relationship with the public to tell the public what you feel yourself. Not, not, not tell them you should act like this or you should think like, like this, but telling the, the public and the, the, the people around you, that's the way I feel, that's the way I think, and I think it's the right way. I may be wrong, but personally, I think it's the right way. 
<coughs> I don't. I I think we must not be ashamed of doing that. That that's our part in the uh, life of the society. Because as an English Canadian artist, uh, I watch Quebec nationalism, and I don't want Quebec to leave because I think being French is part of North America and Canada and the experiment that we're making. But what I admire and adore and wish we would be infected with it is the artistic virility that comes through the separatist movement in terms of wanting to express themselves as Quebecers, as French speakers, as people with their own families and their own communities. Mm -hmm. And as English Canadians, we, we look at Quebec and go, how do you get so vital about your culture? How do you fight so hard for it? How do you fight, as you say, without shame? And here we are in English Canada, you know, we're a little deferring and we're a little ashamed. Oh, I'm an artist. Oh, oh you're a self-indulgent person. But I look to Quebec and I say, how can we be infected by that sense of self and that sense of not being apologetic about your culture? Yeah, yeah. What makes Quebecers not apologetic about who they are and what they want to, what they want to do? Uh, may, maybe my answer would sound uh, paradoxical, but I think it comes from I our isolation geographic isolation and social isolation. As, as English-speaking Canadians, you have the, the chance and the fault of having a very powerful neighbor to the south. And uh, the danger is that you accept everything that comes from the south and you, you become, uh, do you say, inhibited? By it. Inhibited, yeah. Uh, Dampened, inhibited. Uh, some somehow a, a ceiling of expectation is put on yeah, us. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. We must accept what comes from the Americans, of course. But for example, as far as the language is concerned, uh, we speak French. I think it's a good thing that we learn English, that we can use English as as easily, as fluently as possible, but first we're sp French speaking. And uh, starting from that, we had to create our own uh, works. The television, for example, it's not entirely true now because there is more and more coming from the United States, but the television had to be genuinely uh, done in Quebec and in French and I think it helped us to to develop our our culture and uh, our artistic uh, experiments because Quebec has its in television and film has its star system and yes. English Canada yeah. has never been able to make its star system and in English Canada we go well, there, there's Quebec you know six seven million people yeah. how can they seven, make seven million in total so. in total so how can they make a star system and a you know a population that wants to see its favorite performers and in English Canada at 22 million people we can't do it we've tried we can't how because I think that you have to uh, do with the presence of that powerful neighbor there. The real stars for you, or for the English-speaking public, are Americans. It's, it's very, very uh, roughly put, but it's partly true. I think.